Welcome back to my series, Dance Moms Uncovered. This is the finale of season one of Dance Moms Uncovered, but don't worry, you won't have to wait too long for season two. Whilst researching for this series so far, there are several dark secrets I have discovered that I've been itching to share with you guys. And yes, some of these are much darker and more serious than anything I've covered so far in the series. Whilst the show provided its cast members with fame and so many opportunities, it also exposed them to some very serious dangers. Because there's always more to Dance Mums than the producers catch a show. Feel free to share your thoughts on the following evidence. First, I want to discuss racism on the show. For years, people have accused Abby of being racist in the way she would treat and stereotype the dancers on her team, who were people of colour. Previously, I've looked at the weekly meetings that the producers would have with Abby to create dance ideas and assign dancers to the team. It wouldn't be completely unreasonable to think that the producers might have been behind some of these choices, but that isn't what I'm discussing today. According to some former cast members, Abby has said some really nasty and racist things to some of her dancers that weren't aired on the show. When Kelly Highland tried to sue Abby and the Dance Moms production company, Collins Avenue, back in 2014, she claimed that Abby was openly racist to Nia. According to her, Abby once grabbed Nia by the arm and told her that she didn't want any little tooties on her team. This is a reference to Tutti Ramsey, the only African-American character from the show, The Facts of Life. Apparently, the day after this happened, the girls all received iPads as gifts from the producers. Kelly suspects that this was done to calm the mothers down and stop any uproar that this situation caused. You can see in season three, episode 11, that Mackenzie is playing on an iPad while she's in her wheelchair. I also managed to find an Instagram photo posted by Kendall where she's watching a movie on her iPad and you can also see that Paige has an iPad in her room tour. Cameron Bridges has also spoken out about Abby. While she claims that Abby was nice to her when the cameras weren't rolling, apparently this changed once filming began. Cameron revealed that Abby once told her that her feet looked weird because the tops of her feet were dark and the soles of her feet were light. Here's a question I get a lot. Is Abby really that mean on camera? She was nice to me off the camera, but on camera, would not give me the time of day. Well, she gave me the time of day. It was just always something negative. Just one time she told me that the bottom of my feet looked weird because like the top of my feet were brown and the bottom were white and none of the other people's were like that. And she was like, it looks weird on the Marley. So even disregarding the often stereotypical ethnic dancers on the show, some of the cast have claimed to have experienced racism on set. So next, let's look at how Dance Moms was a mentally unhealthy environment. It's truly disturbing how the environment created on the set of Dance Moms resulted in so many cast members suffering mentally. In fact, I've stated previously that Collins Avenue even had to put a clause in their contracts for dancers who competed against the ALDC, stating that they were mentally healthy and would not hold any psychological damage against them. It seems like one of the most common issues suffered by the cast members was anxiety, Cameron has bravely admitted that she has suffered from anxiety and depression and had to receive therapy after her time on Dance Moms. She has also stated that her mother would get so anxious that she would feel physically sick and throw up. But then it's like, I literally had to go to therapy after that mess. My mom got so skinny on that show because she never ate, because her anxiety was that bad that she wouldn't eat. She would lit if she ate something, she would literally go throw up in the bathroom because that's how bad like that stuff would make her stomach hurt and all this stuff. I always knew that she was sick. I always knew it. And like nobody really cared. Like nobody cared. Literally nobody cared. It is also no secret that a lot of the girls have suffered from panic attacks on the show. Paige Highland suffered greatly with anxiety, and her school counselors concluded that her sudden onset of anxiety was due to Abby bullying her. We have also seen the girls struggle with body image issues due to their experiences on the show. It's terrible how often Abby, the moms and fans fixate on the girls' appearances. I could delve into each of these examples in great detail, but for now let's consider this a lightning round of facts. Mackenzie revealed that Kendall wasn't allowed to eat sugar at home. Chloe has revealed that there was a clause in the ALDC contract forbidding dancers from gaining too much weight 
Diana Pent revealed that Abby posted the weights of her dancers on the public bulletin board to shame them. Melissa has claimed that Mackenzie wants a nose job because of the bullying she has suffered from on social media. Mackenzie was liking comments from fans asking if she has an eating disorder. And lastly, Abby has made so many comments about the appearances of the dancers on the show. Here are just a few of them to prove my point. Then fix this hair, because it's horrible. Because if Maddie was any other kid in this country and didn't dance, she wouldn't have been in see a video, she wouldn't be in a movie. They would hire a kid that could act with perfect teeth. Your kid's arms are horrendous. They're like it gargantuan. She enough. looks like a praying mantis. Okay. Okay. But that is that means she did not work. I can see by the size of the thigh, butt mounting in the air. Why what? is she bawling and it's okay? Because oh, she's beautiful and wonderful and skinny and light like her. I'm sitting here listening to you since I got here, and so is she. Her feet, her knees, her, knees, her legs, her, her, her thighs, her, legs, her rib cage, her shoulders, her elbows, her hands, her hair, her neck's not long enough. When you look like 20, you can just wear whatever. No one's looking at the lead time. Evidence number three, overworked. We all know that the cast for Dance Moms worked incredibly hard to learn dancers from week to week. Well, according to some of the cast members, the conditions that the girls were under might have violated or tried to get around child labor laws. Kelly has claimed in her court documents that the children did not receive all the work breaks that were required by Pennsylvanian law. She also points out that the girls were made to spend many hours traveling and competing on the weekends. Kira and Kalani have also mentioned at a Q&A from the Irreplaceables tour that the competitions they attended were constructed by the producers so that the girls don't have to attend dance conventions that span multiple days. Whenever we go to dance competitions with child labor laws, we can't work more than 10 hours. So if we were at a real dance competition, there's times where you perform at 8 in the morning and then you don't perform until 11.30 at night. And that would, that would not be good. We'd be breaking the law, which they did before, but we don't do it anymore. While it hasn't been confirmed whether or not the working conditions adhere to child labour laws, it's pretty clear from what we've heard from multiple cast members that their schedules are crazy busy and not healthy for these young girls. It also means that filming often took time away from school or sleeping. 4. Creepy Crew I don't have a problem with most of the crew members behind Dance Moms because they don't tend to be the manipulative ones behind the scenes. I understand that for the most part, they are just doing their job and trying to earn a decent living. However, there are some crew members that have made me very uncomfortable. While I was making a roleplay video using Chloe's solos from the show earlier this year, I observed something that really disturbed me. Look at the way that the camera pans in these two solos. It also reminded me of some of the inappropriate camera work of the fantastic dance. Obviously, if I saw this happen once or twice, I would be willing to write it off as a coincidence. However, seeing it happen three times to the same dancer really disturbs me. Furthermore, Kelly has accused Collins Avenue of hiring a choreographer to work with the girls, who was later arrested for possession of inappropriate child materials. I believe that this man could be Grant Davies, who visited the ALDC in 2013 with his sister and was later arrested for this, amongst other concerning reasons. And if she isn't referring to this person, that would mean that this was not a one-time occurrence. As you can see, a show like Dance Moms that features young girls can often attract really creepy people with the worst of intentions. Finally, let's look at the stalkers. On the show, the cast members have joked that Kathy and Jeanette have stalked the ALDC elite team. However, the young cast members had much more serious and dangerous people following them, with much, much darker intentions. Over the years, the girls have had a lot of legitimate stalkers, most of which were already convicted of other crimes involving underage children. First, we have the man who sent Jojo five packages containing very inappropriate material. According to some sources, he had a portrait of Jojo tattooed on his body, and he also tagged Jojo in photos of kidnapped survivor Elizabeth Smart, using the hashtag FutureGoals. He was sentenced to three years in prison, which means he might be on the loose now. Then there is the man who claims to be married to Brooke. For many years, he has been operating fake Brooke accounts, claiming that he is the real Brooke, where she refers to him as her husband. While there are certainly plenty of weirdos online doing similar things, this is disturbing because this man actually got an engagement announcement printed in a newspaper and 
and set up a gift registry for their wedding. He also got an announcement in the paper announcing their marriage, and he even bought a wedding ring. The worst part is that he started doing this before Brooke became an adult. Next, we have the man who visited the ALDC studio to read some of his poetry to the girls. The junior elite team was travelling at the time, and fortunately, the doors were locked, so all the dancers inside the ALDC were safe. The man who tried to get inside ended up sitting in the middle of the road with his suitcases, and the police had to pull him off the road and taser him in order to arrest him. Chloe has spoken out about this issue before, saying that the cast had to hire security guards because stalkers would constantly try to come into the studio. She described these experiences as creepy and scary, and I can't even express how much reading about these situations has really disturbed me. So what do you guys think? Did you know that these dark things happened? And do you think that this was a safe environment for the girls? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this season, and I'll see you next time. Bye!